Okay, what I'm going to show you is how I would look at um, a component of the case study that I've already presented um, and how I'd functionally look at someone's hip extension. Now, there's different ways of doing it. Obviously, you've got the modified Thomas test, Thomas test, etc., etc., which will show you how much hip extension you've got in a supine position. But all that shows you, or it may or may not show you, is how far the leg can move into that position. Um, which may be useful, um, but it doesn't tell you everything. So, what a Thomas test may tell you is that you have 30 degrees of hip extension, say. But uh, if you can only control 10 degrees of that, you've effectively only got 10 degrees of hip extension because your body will not use that motion if it doesn't know how to control it. So, this doesn't mean that a Thomas test is negligible, but uh, it doesn't tell you how much of that you can control. Um, so what I'm going to do is just talk you through how I would look at someone's functional range of, of hip extension um, and why I'd look at it this way. Well, the reason I look at it in a, in a functional scenario is um, I'm looking at isolating um, hip extension but in an integrated scenario. So I'm looking at I'm specifically looking at the hip, but I'm also looking at compensations. Where do they try to get the hip extension from? And you can try to cheat, try to get it from the knee, you can try to get it from the lumbar spine. There's lots of different ways you can try and rotate away from the hip, but all of these things give me an idea of how the person is choosing to move or choosing not to move, as the case may be. Um, the way I tend to measure as well, which I'll show you now, is measurable in many different ways. So I tend to use video analysis so I can measure angles, but I also have a, a tape on the floor uh, and a tape on the wall so I can get a horizontal measure from the wall and I can also get a vertical measure. Um, and you can compare that one side to the other um, and that's a good marker for going forwards. Do they improve, do they not improve, uh, etc. So, for me to look at hip extension, I'd do this in a single leg stance, but I'd start off with the other foot giving me some balance. And then all I'm trying to do is take my arms up over my head and reach backwards. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate that now. So, standing close to the wall, I can measure the distance of my foot from the wall. Standing on my right foot, left toe touching, take my arms up above my head. Now I reach back. Can I touch the wall? Okay, if I can, so I'll edge further away, keeping that left toe touching, and that's about my limit there. So that's with my left foot giving me some balance. So I can measure that in terms of verticality and horizontal distance. Now I want to see what can you do just on the one leg. So I do exactly the same measurement, taking the left foot off. Can I get back to the wall? And yes, that's easier. Oh, well then my balance starts to go. So that gives me an indication of how far my hip can actually extend, um, but also how much of that I can actually control. Now there are obviously compensations that can happen. You can start to compress through your lumbar spine, you can start to flex your knee, but in a functional scenario, your, your lumbar spine does have to go into extension. Um, and that's not bad uh, unless it's excessive or causing problems. Um, but hip extension is a, a big component of that. So uh, as a functional measure, I find it very beneficial and you can see lots of problems and lots of compensations for the problems uh, when performing this test.